Hi, it's Jason from drpremed.com and thank you for visiting the site. I know you're here to figure out what does it actually take to get into medical school. I'm going to break that down for you. I'm not going to give you all this hype or all of this over-the-top information, but I'm going to tell you what it actually takes to get into medical school. It comes down to your numbers. Without having the numbers, you're not going to get into medical school. It's as simple as that. And so what type of numbers are we talking about? The first thing that any adcom is going to think about when they consider your application for medical school is going to be your MCAT. Now, how well do you need to do on the MCAT? Do you need a 500? Do you need a 508? Do you need a 515? You need a 508 on your MCAT score. Now, what this means is if you have a 508 on your MCAT, your odds of getting into medical school are very high. And if you have a 501, you can apply to medical school, but most likely you're not going to get in. This is just how the latest data for the most recent app, applicant class, those were their numbers for getting into medical school. And ADCOMS place the most weight on your MCAT because it's a standardized test, meaning that they can see, they can make apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparisons of applicants across the board who go to different schools, have different backgrounds. So that's what they look for. And then after they take a look at your MCAT score, they're going to look at your GPA. To be competitive, you have to have a top GPA. It's as simple as that. And for the students who actually get into medical school when they apply, they have a 3.7 GPA and above. So that's what you need to aim for and work on. And what I tell students is, by the time that you're ready to apply to medical school, your GPA is pretty much set in stone and it's not going to move. The only thing that you really have control over is your MCAT score. So you need to take that very seriously. And so if that GPA needed 3.7 or better to have a, a strong chance of getting into medical school. And why you can't move it, think about it. You've been in pre-med for a year or two, maybe three years, you're ready to apply and you're seeing this video now. If you have all these courses and the sciences on your GPA, you can get a calculator. You can figure out what you need to do and most likely you're going to see that the GPA just isn't going to move no matter how much time Time and effort how many additional courses that you do and why I talk about the numbers is because of how many people are applying to medical school most medical schools on average have about 150 students in their class that's actually a pretty large medical school by all intents and purposes and these medical schools are receiving over 10,000 applications yes 10,000 applications for 150 spots and so what are they going to do that's way too many applications for an ad com to read over so what do they do they use computers in that computer they put in a, an algorithm that says okay we're looking for applicants who have this minimum MCAT score or we want them to have a GPA in this range or above and if you don't meet those numbers or requirements then the computer just kicks out your application and you're gonna get a rejection letter in the mail or an email telling you that you're not qualified to get into medical school and so that's what how that process works and think about this all of it only talked about was your GPA and MCAT what about all the other parts of your application your personal statement your um, volunteering your shadowing your extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation. That means absolutely nothing if you don't have the numbers. That's why there's a huge focus on making sure you have the numbers because you need to have those numbers for a person to even take a look at your application. And so then, let's say you have the numbers. What do adcoms look for then? They look at your personal statement because this gives them insight of who you are as a person and what you bring to the table. And so when they look at your personal statement, that's how they decide between two equally qualified candidates. It's what you put in your personal statement that matters. And you have to remember, you have one chance to write your personal statement and it goes out to all the medical schools that you apply to. So you have to take it seriously. You have to really be personal in your personal statement. You have to answer two questions why medicine and why you if you're able to do that you have a very strong chance of getting into medical school so if we, if we recap right now what do you need 
First, you need the numbers. The most important number that you need to have is your MCAT score. Once you have the MCAT score, it's going to be your GPA. After the GPA, then AdComs will actually personally take a look at your application. They'll put eyeballs on your application. And what they're going to look for is your personal statement. How you come across. Are you somebody that we want to meet in person and invite to a medical school interview? If you're able to do that, those are the keys to success to getting into medical school. Yes, there's other steps to the process that you need to handle. But if you can't handle those first three things, then you just don't have a chance of getting into medical school. And I'll help you work out everything else that you need to do to make sure you have the strongest chance of getting into medical school. I cover my seven steps for medical school admission success and everything that you need to do. And I welcome you to drprema.com. Again, this is Jason. Take care.